Leveling with Barbarian has never been better thanks to the massive buff to Charge in Season 3. Charge Barbarian is now the fastest build to level with, whether you're playing the Seasonal Realm or even the Eternal Realm. This build makes you faster than ever before as we're able to spam Charge every few seconds, meaning you'll clear dungeons in record time just pile driving enemies along the way. We also have constant healing thanks to our shouts which also provide damage bonuses and damage reduction from enemies. And this build is more fury efficient than ever before at those early levels, so you're not standing around spamming your basic attack, which used to be a big part of the barbarian leveling process. We also managed to have near 100% uptime on berserking, which is new for early leveling barbarians, meaning we have constant double damage and even more movement speed, which is just going to help that leveling process. I'll also go over the aspects this build uses. Don't worry, this build is absolutely incredible with just codex aspects, and I'll outline a few of the ones to pick up early on while leveling that'll completely transform the playstyle. So let's go over the core gameplay loop of the build. Whenever charge is off cooldown, use it. It's by far the strongest ability in this build. Thanks to power charge, for each enemy you hit, you'll reduce its cooldown by 3 seconds up to a maximum of 9 seconds. Because of this, you'll only have to wait around 3-4 to four seconds in between charge uses. Battle Fervor gives us berserking whenever we damage someone with charge, which is a 25% damage bonus and 15% movement increase speed. Unconstrained, our key passive in the build, boosts Berserking's damage bonus to 100%, literally double damage. Whilst we're waiting for charge to come off cooldown, we use our basic skill Lunging Strike to generate fury and then use Double Swing to dump that fury. The reason why I love Double Swing over something like Hammer of the Ancients is because Double Swing is just way more fury efficient at those early levels. It costs 25 fury instead of 35. And thanks to Enhanced Double Swing, we can sometimes generate fury on top when we hit stunned or knocked targets, which charge often inflicts. And then we can keep our Berserking going thanks to Furious Double Swing, so we literally have near 100% uptime of Berserking, which before this season was practically unheard of for Barbarians. We we also have three shouts in this build, Warcry which boosts damage and grants berserking, Challenging Shout which gives you 40% damage reduction, Rallying Cry which boosts your fury generation and movement speed. As well as these bonuses, these shouts are our main source of healing for this build. Thanks to Raid Leader, we heal 3% per second with each shout. Now this doesn't sound like a lot, but it stacks and it adds up very quickly. Each shout lasts for well over 7 seconds and we have 3 of these shouts. So we can heal well over 60% of our health with all 3 shouts every 20 seconds or so. Why I like shouts as well is because this build leads on to the end game version of charge very very well. The Martial Paragon Glyph got a massive buff this season for charge. It's going to be the first Paragon Glyph you're going to socket when you reach level 50 and have those Paragon points to dump. Whenever you use your Shout skill, it's going to reduce the cooldown of your non-Shout skill, so charge in this case, by a whopping 4 seconds. Which means if you tactically use your Shout whenever charge is on cooldown, you'll probably be able to spam 4-5 to five charges in a row once you get this glyph. So in my eyes, the continuity in this build from an early to mid to late game progression is just perfect. So let's go over the skill tree in more detail. Remember the priority when you're leveling is to unlock a new skill on the toolbar rather than upgrading an already existing ability. You want to start off by putting one point into Lunging Strike, which is our Fury Generator. The reason I prefer this is that it can lock onto enemies from further away than other basic skills, so it almost acts like a movement tool at times. One point into Enhanced Lunging Strike and one point into Battle Lunging Strike. Put one point into Double Swing as early as you can, then put one point into Enhanced and Furious Double Swing. You'll want to max out Double Swing pretty quickly to 5 out of 5 as early on that will be your main damage ability. Pick up Rallying Cry alongside Enhanced Rallying Cry and Strategic Rallying Cry. Challenging Shout alongside Enhanced Challenging Shout and Tactical Challenging Shout and then you'll unlock Charge. Make sure to pick up Enhanced Charge and Power Charge and then you want to make sure your Charge ability is 5 out of 5 in rank as soon as possible as that will lower the cooldown of the ability significantly. Then pick up Warcry and Enhanced Warcry and Power Warcry. Make sure to put 3 points into Booming Voice so you can unlock Raid Leader which you want to put 3 points into as soon as possible which will help with healing a lot. Put 1 point into Aggressive Resistance, you can later max it out to 3 but initially you want to unlock Battle Fervor 
which you want to max out pretty quickly so you can maintain Berserk as much as possible. Around this time, you should unlock your key passive and you should be able to keep up Berserk near 100% of the time. So we go for Unconstrained as our key passive, which is a flat double damage boost for your build when Berserking. Now we go back and finish our passives, put three points into Swiftness for increased movement speed, and three points into Pit Fighter for the increased damage. Three points into Prolific Fury to help with Fury generation, put one point into Thick Skin, and then three into Counter Offensive, three points into Wallop, and finally three points into Imposing Presence for increased life. In terms of aspects, there's three aspects I'm going to recommend when leveling. There are two offensive codex aspects that are mandatory in my eyes that elevate charge to an S tier ability and give it some AoE potential. The first is the Brawler's aspect, which causes enemies to explode after they are damaged by charge. And the second is Veteran Brawler's aspect, which increases your charge damage after you use your double swing. There is one other aspect that does massively improve charge, but because it's a drop, I'm not going to say it's mandatory. But if you do get it during the leveling process, then do use it because it's a massive bonus and that's the Ancestral Charge aspect. What this does is it calls forth four Ancients who charge with you horizontally when you use your Charge ability, so your ability just has way more AoE than before. Like I said, the build absolutely does not require this aspect. It's still an S tier build with the first two offensive aspects I mentioned, but eventually you will want to farm this through either Obols or Dungeons farming legendaries. In terms of Codex defensive aspects, honestly, when leveling, none are necessary. But if you do want to unlock one, then Aspect of Might is very easy to obtain and gives you 20% damage reduction when you use your basic attack, which you will use often in the build in between your charge uses. For your technique, which applies a passive bonus to all of your attacks, regardless of what weapon you're using, I recommend using the one-handed mace expertise. This helps to boost damage against bosses when you stun them, and when you stun an enemy and it survives after using charge, the increased damage bonus is nice to finish it off. Most endgame builds will eventually switch to two-handed axe though once you are able to apply vulnerable a lot better. In terms of gear, my main tip is going to be don't focus on gear too much, you're going to be leveling so fast and replacing things very fast. Remember to use the highest DPS weapons though as that will boost your damage the most. Make sure charge is set to auto select for your arsenal selection. This means the game will automatically pick your highest DPS weapons to use for damage calculations for charge. If you set it to a specific weapon when leveling, the ability's damage will fall behind as you upgrade your weapons very quickly. If you're playing on the seasonal realm, you'll also have a little spider thing in season three that follows you around. After playing around with it, I found that the offensive governing stones are very underwhelming. Instead, I found much better use from the utility governing stones, I used Protect which gave me a barrier every 20 seconds, and Reconstruct which healed my character for 22% every 10 seconds. Don't worry too much about the tuning stones, but for later on in the game there's a couple of tuning stones that I think will pair quite well with these utility stones, and that's the Fortify Support and Safeguard Tuning Support Stones for more survivability as they provide Fortify and damage reduction. But these, as I said, you shouldn't really focus on and you don't need them until the end game of Season 3. So there you have it, my Charge Barbarian leveling build for level 1 to 50. It's faster, stronger and just better than all the previous Barbarian leveling builds out there. You'll be level 50 in no time. If you enjoyed what I talked about today, remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Diablo builds, including an endgame version of this build as we get deeper into Season 3. I'm Mr. Ronit, and that's it for today. Peace out, guys.